Here are three words, and they all rhyme. Barbed, tarred, and hard. I'd like for us to think of these words as they relate to grace, or more specifically, a particular way some trash God's grace. In our last study, we focused on those who think of grace as something that gives them the freedom to live as they wish. Remember Romans 6, 1? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? Here's God's emphatic answer, by no means. But there's another way to misuse or trash God's grace. There are those who think they can do whatever they want to, but then there are also those who think you have to do whatever they want you to do. They take what God says and make their own preference-oriented or tradition-based rules, and they use those man-made rules to determine your spiritual depth and your faithfulness to God. That's just not right. Wrong. The first of these extremes, I can do whatever I want to do, is an abuse of God's grace. The second extreme, you have to do what I tell you to do, fails to use God's grace. These people write their own laws. They expect you to do what they say is right. And when you don't, you're no longer right with God, and you better make it right. God's mercy, His love, His kindness, God's grace is seldom, if ever, considered. This extreme is mostly about what we're doing for God instead of what God has done for us, and it's just not right. So here are those three words that rhyme, barbed, tarred, and hard. To begin, there's this word barbed. Now, I was born and raised in Texas, so you can imagine what comes to my mind when I hear the word barbed. It's barbed wire, two strands of wire twirled together and garnished with what looks like man-made saw briars, and man, they can hurt. If you back up to them, you get stabbed. If you scrape up against them, you're ripped open. Those who promote their man-made traditions and have less to do with God's grace than they should, they're a lot like barbed wire. When we don't do what their laws tell us to do, they make us public enemy number one to the church. Even though the Bible says, speak evil of no one, Titus 3.2, they talk about us, and that hurts. Oh, and when they dare to talk with us, more times than not, what they say or how they say it rips a hole in our soul. Barbed wire will hurt you. These people who feverishly declare and defend their traditions, they will too. Jesus had to deal with people like this. Folks that use their brand of religion to judge and hurt others. We know them as the scribes and Pharisees. On one occasion, they even had the nerve to ask Jesus, why do your disciples break the traditions of the elders? Jesus' response is telling, why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? And these are the people of whom He said, their heart is far from Me. In vain do they worship Me, teaching as their doctrine the commandments of men. That's all in Matthew 15, 1-9. Our Lord had no tolerance for this way of thinking. We shouldn't either. Next, there's the word tarred, as in tarred and feathered. This form of punishment and public humiliation goes all the way back to the 12th century. A person's head would be shaved, or they would be stripped to some degree. A sticky, resinous, hot pitch or melted tar would be applied to their body, and then they'd be rolled in feathers or had feathers thrown on them. That way, wherever they went, they'd be recognized as an offender of some law. Those who promote their man-made traditions and have less to do with God's grace than they should, they're a lot like those who tarred and feathered others. God has laws. We have to live by those laws. There are things that we must do and things we must not do. Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Matthew 7, 21. We have to do what God says. But the people we're talking about take what God says and turn it into what they want God to say. And when we refuse to use the policies of their manifesto, it's, oh no. And they'll either have nothing to do with us, or if they have to be around us, they're condescendingly distant. Again, Jesus dealt with people just like that. Folks that 
used their brand of religion to elevate and isolate themselves from those that didn't live up to their standards, the scribes and Pharisees. On another occasion, they saw Jesus spending a lot of time with tax collectors and sinners, people they despised. So they grumbled and thoroughly complained, Luke 15 says. That's when Jesus used three stories about the grace of God, the parable about a lost sheep, a lost silver coin, a lost son. Jesus wasn't about to let these guys tell Him to avoid and punish those for whom God had deep feelings. And that brings us to the word hard. Did you know the silk of a spider web is the tenth hardest substance known to man? It's ten times stronger than the Kevlar of a bulletproof vest. Did you know that currently one of the hardest minerals known to man is graphene? It is 50% stronger than titanium and 200 times stronger than steel. Those who promote their man-made traditions and have less to do with God's grace than, well, they should. They're just as hard. They wrestle the Scriptures to make them say what they want them to say or what they already think they say. Then with hearts as hard as graphene, they weave together their rules into a belief system they seldom rescind and often defend. In the words of the prophet Isaiah, their hearts have grown dull with their ears they can barely hear and their eyes they've closed. Jesus had to deal with people like that too. Folks with a religion that chose not to think and refused to let anyone else think. Remember what the Lord said about the scribes and Pharisees in Matthew 23? They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on people's shoulders. But they themselves are not willing to move them with their finger. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. Hard words from people with hard hearts that make it harder to go to heaven than it really is. Jesus made it ever so simple. Unless you believe that I am He, you will die in your sins. John 8, 24. Believe. Unless you repent, change the way you think and live, you will perish. Luke 13, 3. Repent. Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. John 3, 5. Be born of water. And Jesus sent His apostles to teach that same simple message. Just listen to the apostle Peter. Everyone who believes in Him, Jesus, receives forgiveness of sins. Acts 10, 43. Believe. Repent that your sins may be blotted out, that is forgiven. Acts 3, 19. Repent. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Acts 2, 38. Be baptized. Born of water. That's just incredibly simple. And that's what makes it possible for us to echo the words of our memory verse, the words of Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. It's incredibly simple. And yes, it is simply incredible. Incredible.